Hello and welcome to the third part of this tutorial where we'll be talking about how to edit uh, Halloween party flyer template in Adobe InDesign. My name is Maria and I'm the designer and the author of this tutorial. Um, if you want to check out the template or you want more information on it, you can uh, use the links provided in the description down below. Okay, now let's open up um, InDesign. This is uh, CS5. Minimum version that you can use in order to um, edit InDesign template is CS4. Uh, there are two different ways, again, of um, importing the file. You can go through File Open, uh, or the way I do it is we open the InDesign file. We have InDesign flyer here. As you can see, it's a CS 5.5 version, and we have the IDML file, which is compatible with CS4 version. In if you have a CS4 version, uh, you just take this file and open it up. We're going to be opening this file up. Okay. It has opened the document. And as you can see, uh, as the same way in the previous tutorials, it will open up with all the technical info on the front. So you know what are the technical um, sizes, where is the cut, where is the bleed, and all that stuff. Uh, now, before we start working, again, this is an imaginary scenario where you don't have anything open up. So let's open up all the panels we'll use. First of all, we're going to be uh, opening the page panel. We will go to Window, Pages, or simply a shortcut F12. Now, this will give you uh, all the pages and the, that are available in this document. And as you can see, this is a master page. Um, here's how it works in my templates. Master page holds uh, all of the design elements and the page itself uh, holds uh, the text elements. Now let's open up the layers panel so you can see uh, more clearly what I'm talking about. We will go to window, layers, or just simply press F7. So we have layers panel open up. Again, all the layers panel, uh, all the elements are in different layers, uh, differently named. So you can definitely check out, you know what you're working on, where you're working on it. This marks an info. Um, again, as in Illustrator, it has been set not to print. So it will show while you're working on the design, but it will not print whether or not you leave it, you leave it um, here open or not okay so uh, let's close up this one so we can see more clearly what we're doing here um, here's the thing here's the design so now when we go let's say for a tombstone you can see here's the tombstone here's the shadow all the elements are named so you can work on them individually um, Next thing we're going to uh, open up is the swatches panel. So we'll go to Window, Color, Swatches, and uh, let's open up Gradient while we're here. Okay, so again, swatches panel come with the file. You can see uh, here are some info swatches, basically those those come from this top layer. These are the colors in that info marks and info design, so you don't have to worry about them. It's been locked up. Um, next thing we're going to open up is the effects panel. We go to Window, Effects, or here you can see Shift Control F10 is the shortcut. Now we're going to be using this effects panel to basically work on. Uh, the shadows here because this is the only thing that uses uh, any kind of um, blending mode in this entire layer. Um, and finally we'll open up characters panel. We go to window, type in tables and open up the characters. Okay, so let's just minimize this until they're needed. 
Okay, so we got it here. Okay, first uh, let's work on color editing. Like I said, this is a fairly complicated design. It's not uh, it's not one of those corporate designs where basically you have three colors all through the design so you can change them easily. This would take a little bit more work. Now this, um, as all the other templates that I create uh, in design file is created from shapes. So you can modify them, you can change them, you can enlarge them, make them smaller, you can rotate them and they will not lose uh, the quality when it comes to print. That's what's so important. All of these elements are basically shapes. Now when it comes to color, if you want to change the color scheme, you want to create your own color scheme, uh, making the colors is quite uh, simple. You can go here in this tools panel. Again, like in Illustrator or Photoshop, you can find your color here. You can type in your preferred color. Let's make it again this so green color uh, and then just press add CMYK swatch and it will be added here. Now one thing about uh, colors in, um, in design is let's open up this one. Um, all of these colors are basically, if you remember Illustrator uh, and the talk we had about global colors, all the colors by default, uh, in InDesign are global colors, so you know you, you can uh, change them. And once you do, when you open up a color you want to change, okay, let me find something that's going to be a little bit more. Uh, 36 is not the one. This is one that's being used a lot. Okay, let's see what happens. Uh, if we just lower magenta and you can see it's been changed all throughout the design like everywhere you have this color is going to be changed it's going to be changed in gradients uh, because the gradients were created by using these colors so it's fairly easy to change the color scheme you if you know what you're doing and you know uh, perfectly well what kind of colors you want to use so you can play with them you know find the color scheme you like and so on and so on. When it comes to gradients, like I said, uh, the gradients were created from these colors. So once you change this color, it will change automatically here. If you want for some reason to change and create your own gradients, let's say you want to have a little bit different scheme where you don't want the gradients to follow the basic color scheme, you just double click when you open up a gradient tool uh, you double click on the first color here. I'm sorry, it doesn't want to open up. Okay, now let's open up this as gradient one. Okay, uh, gradient ten, that's what. Okay, we open it up from the swatches panel. For some reason, CS5 doesn't want to open it up from here. Uh, we see it's line, a linear type. Now here are the two colors that make it and as you can see they're made from swatches. Now you can change that, you can add your own color, but then um, remember when you just add a color and it's not in your swatches panel, if you change it on later that color will not change all through the design. So you gotta make sure you're working on the swatches panel, you select your own color, uh, let's say this, and as you can see all the gradients, this gradient 10 has been automatically updated. Okay, so that's when it comes to color editing. Now we're gonna turn our attention to transparency. Uh, transparency editing uh, here in, in InDesign is basically done through the effects panel and when you click on it you can see as in um, Illustrator before, we have the blending mode, it's multiply, the opacity is set to 30, let's say we want to change it to 50, and that's it. Voila, you're done. So you can naturally move it a little bit, like if you want to add a little bit different view, okay? Now this doesn't make quite sense because then this would have to go here, okay? Let's say this is the final thing you want to do. 
Now, in order to zoom in and out, you can naturally use, you know, Alt and uh, the scroll key, or if you just want to see the whole design, just double click on the master page. And we have been working with the master page all through with uh, design, designing this, editing this design. Now, uh, let's go to the page. And here you can see here are actually all the texts um, for your design. Now let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, we're going to open up a character panel. Just lower it down a little bit. You open up character panel and um, as in all other uh, programs, you can either click on the text you want to change, double click on it, and then change it manually. Okay, or you can go here with a uh, type tool, press it, and then do the same thing. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. You can naturally change the colors. Now, here's a little bit of a trick when it comes to Illustrator. If you try to, if you're just um, working uh, with uh, this text you just clicked on it not with a type tool but just regularly click on it and you try to change the color of it let's find something is gonna be let's say this red it's actually gonna change the color of the shape behind the text so let's undo this in order to change the text you have to tell uh, in design that this is what you want to change and now when you change it, let's say, to that red, here it is. We change the color. Okay, so we can go through editing all of these texts the same way we edited in previous um, tutorials. Change it. Uh, again, here's the difference in the text. This is 14. So if you don't have enough space, let's say it's smart. Club.com, as you can see, it, it's getting a, a little bit bigger than it should. You just make it a little bit smaller so it fits. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Actually, make it eight points. And okay, here we go. This is basically the line you shouldn't be uh, crossing over. This is the, the, the line for um, the safe text, so that text wouldn't be messed in um, other designs. Now, uh, when saving this design, um, as you can see, if you open up the IDML file, it's called Untitled 1 by default, or 2, 3, depends how many files you have. Uh, saving this file for printer also, it is a good practice to make sure all the elements are, all the text has been converted to curves. Um, now there's a way, and I'm going to make a, a tutorial on how to make the transparency level, that transparency layer is basically going to help you out with it. But in order to make this more expedient, because this doesn't have a ton of text, it's not like we have created the book or anything. You just select them all. Uh, let me see if I can do it from the right click here. Nope. Object. Uh, type, 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 create outlines. Okay, we go to type, create outlines, and now all the text has been converted to the outlines so your printer it, and this is super important always convert your text your type into outlines when you're sending them to print um, because there is a chance that your they will be able to open it up uh, in the right way even maybe they have that specific uh, font that you're using but don't take any chances. Just convert it to outline and then you're safe. You know, nothing, they're not, there's not going to be mistakes and everything else. So let's save it. We go to file, save as, and I'm just going to save that as flyer outline curves. 
Okay, it's gonna save it as InDesign file. You can send it like this, you can export it to PDF, but I'm gonna make a special tutorial on exporting uh, for print in different types of file uh, versions so you can uh, check that out and, and make sure that you're doing uh, exporting part, part the right way. Okay, that was it. Um, in the next chapter, we'll be talking about um, editing the files in Adobe Photoshop, and that will conclude our tutorial series on uh, Halloween party. Oops. Okay. Goodbye.